introduction to systems of linear equations as we start this course this very first section uh, we deal with the very fundamental uh, position of linear algebra and we start with uh, considering line equations that serves as the foundation as we go uh, forward as we deal with what we call a system that is the grouping of uh, several um, equations uh, together we call that grouping a system we like to uh, solve uh, for uh, the solution to the system uh, and that solution for the system simply means uh, how uh, how do these equations relate uh, do they intersect and if they do, do do they have a common intersection if they intersect uh, uh, at a common point or line uh, or even a plane we call that uh, commonality the solution there are three possibilities for the solution uh, the solution uh, could be uh, a, the so-called unique solution that is that we get uh, intersection at a point or a, a line or a plane or um, there could be no solution um, uh, the lines under consideration do not intersect and um, or the planes under consideration do not intersect or uh, we could have infinitely many solutions that is that the lines under consideration all coincide they're the same or the planes under consideration are all the same so so as we um, as we deal with with that let us um, consider there these uh, three possibilities of solutions. The, the first is the unique solution. So if we say here that um, uh, uh, you have the unique solution, then that uh, the lines under consideration are said to here intersect at some common point. So that point then is said to be the solution point. Now if if we have uh, planes under consideration then do the planes all intersect at some common point or line? We can look at it in 3D as a line but if you look right in front you may only consider just the point so uh, that point uh, for the plane does represent a line um, think about it if if this if these two were very similar these two graphs uh, behind this point would be a line in the third space right in 3d well that's not that's just the two space but just trying to give an example now the second possibility is that we have infinitely many solutions here again the uh, uh, the lines under consideration are the same um, you may be given two equations sometimes three equations doesn't matter but when you go to solve they end up basically just representing uh, the same graph and so thus every point infinitely many points uh, there are said to be the solution if we have that then we have to determine parameters uh, by which we say that um, that one term whether it's x y or z um, uh, we let one or two or could be three of those terms be parameters uh, in the uh, real space to determine the other values uh, thus we have uh, what we would call later a dependent uh, set of functions or a dependent set of uh, points when we have the unique solution up above uh, we say that uh, the functions or the points you know, the vectors if you will are independent 
inconsistent. The idea of consistency is that we get a solution. Here for infinitely many solutions we get consistency. We, we do get a solution. We just get a whole lot of them, right? The last possibility is that we have no solution. Here for no solution the lines under consideration never intersect. And sometimes I mean, we could talk about lines but uh, not necessarily for linear algebra are we always just um, um, precluded, uh, restricted to lines. Um, uh, these uh, equations can represent uh, uh, various uh, forms. Um, the idea of linearity will be uh, expressed a little bit later um, and so that uh, a system uh, it's said to be linear um, and, and, and you might not just per se have lines uh, or planes, you, know, you could have other graphs and still uh, uh, be a linear algebra. Uh, so um, if there are lines they never cross, if there are planes then we say no solution because there's no common point of intersection where you may have if it's three equations like for this example over here uh, three equations but there is no commonality of all three M maybe two the, the, of the three there may be some kind of commonality but that's not the issue we're looking uh, for three equations is there a commonality for all three if not then thus we say no solution and we'll look at uh, you know how how that looks analytically uh, as well one you have the graph how does it look graphically but then um, or, or geometrically, graphically, but then also how does that look just using algebra. So linear equations of, of just the basic understanding, linear equations of the form ax plus by plus cz equal to d, well you know that represents a plane in the third uh, space. We'd say it's, it's linear. Uh, a, b, c, and d are just numbers. However, nonlinear equations are of the form, see that sign y throws it off, the x squared throws it off, the uh, square root of z uh, throws it off. But it is possible to have a function where uh, each term has uh, the, the same uh, demonstrative uh, in that you could have uh, everything is x squares. Uh, ax squared could be, in terms of x squared, could be x squared, y squared, z squared, um, and you may have three of those equations. Well, we can look at the linearity um, because they're of the same form type, so then you would still look at the coefficients in front, a, b, and c, um, uh, to form some kind of matrix, and then from that matrix, um, uh, can we reduce that to get some kind of solution? But here, everything is out of whack. This is an x, this is a sign. Y. They don't uh, relate X square and Y. So uh, just for your basic understanding of, of linear equations and a very simple understanding I would say um, is, is that um, we talk about uh, functions, forms or equations where the variable uh, has only the first power, x to the first power. Sine y has no power, right? x squared is the second power. The, uh, z to the one half power, that's not the first power. Linear equations are said to be homogeneous. We'll get into that later, but I thought maybe to just introduce that. Uh, homogeneous equations are said to be equations that are equal to zero. Uh, in uh, differential equations, uh, we talk about two types of, of uh, homogeneity and, and, and even in this course because differential equations is a subset of linear algebra we will also talk about uh, homogeneity uh, uh, in the sense of, a, um, of an inner product space <clears throat> but for right now uh, a homogeneous uh, system of equations is just said to be equations then they're all set to equal to zero and you see here how this system, I don't know why it does that. This system here, all of the equations are equal to zero. If the, uh, the system is square, 
and we, what we mean by square is that um, the number of equations equal the number of variables so if I have three equations and here we have three unknowns or variables then we say that this is a, a this n by n or a three by three system so we say here that the system is squared not that it's some a squared but uh, the number of uh, equations or the number of rows equal the number of unknowns or the number of columns if we have a square homogeneous system then we always get the trivial solution here the, the word row is synonymous for equation and the, the word column is synonymous for unknowns or variables, right? What's the trivial solution? Well, each term or each of the, uh, uh, the, the variables, independent variables, are equal to 0, x of 1 equal to 0, x of 2 equal to 0, and so on. We have n of these terms. Here, for that for this particular uh, problem, um, x sub 1 is equal to 0, x sub 2 is 0, x sub 3 is 0. And uh, there's no work to be done there. You're done. Right? We can represent a system using uh, matrices here. Um, consider this system. We relate that to a matrix. So all we do is just represent uh, the coefficients, the 3, negative 3, 6, and the 6 for that first row or that first equation. Um, we call this an augmented matrix. It is augmented by the this uh, last column over here, 6, 5, and 7. Without the 6, 5, and 7, we call it a coefficient matrix. So the augmentation there, without that augmentation, we just refer to uh, just the coefficient matrix. The juice of what we deal with would will be with the uh, coefficient matrix. We could talk about non-homogeneous linear systems. Remember we said that a homogeneous system is where you have these terms here are equal to zero. Well if they're not equal to zero then we talk about a non-homogeneous uh, system. Of the three types of uh, systems Again, don't forget that we have three solution types. Uh, that is, of the, 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 the solution types for the system, there are three possibilities for the solution. Uh, the unique, the no solution, and the infinitely many solution. If it's infinitely many solutions, then we need to determine parameters to be able to uh, solve for the system. Let's see. In each part, find the solution set of the linear equation by using parameters as necessary. How do we determine parameters? We determine parameters by looking at the equation and looking at the number of variables. So you would take just a simple uh, equation uh, that the number of uh, variables minus the number of equations would equal the number of parameters. The parameters simply mean uh, what the equation would depend on. So here we have three variables or three unknowns minus one equation. So that equals to here two parameters. Now, we use parameters, uh, uh, just alphabets. Um, uh, typically, uh, S, T, or even R, uh, sometimes um, U or V, and that kind of thing. Well, here we have two parameters, so we say let, let Y equal to S. Well, S could be some, any real number, and here, let Z equal to T. But t is any real number. So then we get 3x minus 5s 
plus 4z is equal to 7, that should be a t, so we solve for the x, we get 3x is equal to 7 plus 5s minus 4t, and so x is equal to 7 thirds plus 5 thirds s minus 4 thirds t. So the solution set would be the value for x 7 thirds plus 5 third s minus 4 thirds t comma the solution for y which is s and the solution for z which is t and so we call this our solution set now let's look at that for another equation where there's more going on here we have two equations but here we have four unknowns x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, x sub 4 so here we have four variables minus two equations now that equals here for us two parameters so notice that uh, x sub 1 basically depends on x sub 3 and the x sub 2 depends on x sub 4 now you can look at it the other way around as well x sub 3 depends on x sub 1 that's fine if you wrote that x sub 4 depends on x sub 2 it doesn't matter in terms of of the order uh, we will as we go further into the course talk about the order um, uh, but uh, mathematically uh, either way is fine so so here uh, notice Notice x of 1 depends on the choice of x of 3 and x of 2 depends on the, the choice for x of 4. For x of 4. thus let x sub 3 equal to s s is any real number and x sub 4 equal to t so any, any real number so so then we have x sub 1 is equal to that 1 minus x sub 3 but x sub 3 is s and x sub 4 is equal to that 0 minus x sub 2 well x sub 2 we're saying that's x sub 2 excuse me x sub 2 is equal to 0 minus x sub 4 x sub 4 is t so for our solution set we have x sub 1 which would be 1 minus s x sub 2 minus t x sub 3 is s x sub 4 is t so this forms our infinite solution set okay. in terms of trying to solve a system or um, a matrix we only deal with three elementary row operations those elementary row operations are one interchange equations that is rows for the matrix or we can multiply an equation by a non-zero uh, number or multiply a row by a non-zero number or scalar 
we can add a multiple of one equation to another equation. Now, as an example, if I can write this on the side in terms of interchanging, I'm going to just use capital R for, for rows. So here, we'll say if I want to interchange row 1 with row 3, we can multiply any row by some non-zero number. So let's say if I'm going to multiply row 2 by a, a negative 3, so we'll say negative 3 times row 2. And that always gives us a new uh, row 2. And then we can add a multiple of one uh, row to another row. Just for an example, we can say negative 2 times row 1 plus row 3. That always gives us uh, some this new row 3. The changes happen into row 3. Row 1 originally stays the same. The, the change is only uh, being affected to this row 3. Right? So when we deal with matrices later you'll see how that uh, comes into uh, into play. So here solve the system. Let's look at this problem. Solve the system given that uh, the system has infinitely many solutions. It kind of just tell us that just to kind of help you out to, to guide you along. Use parametric equations, that is the, the R, S's, and the T's to describe the solution set. Now if you look at um, these uh, three equations, uh, notice how equation 1 is very similar to equation 2 and also equation 1 is very similar to equation 3. If I multiply a negative 3 times row 1 or equ equation 1 and then add that to equation 2, equation 2 cancels out because uh, equation 1 is just a, a multiple of equation 2. Uh, likewise, um, uh, equation 1 and equation 3, they're negative multiples of each other. So, uh, so using up above that I can either interchange equations, I can multiply an equation by a non-zero number, or I can um, add a multiple of one equation to another equation. So what I'm going to do first is say negative 3 times, I'm just using R for rho, this is just row 1, row 2, row 3. Negative 3 uh, times row 1, I'm going to add that to row 2. Now that's going to give us a new row 2. Right? So I'm going to just keep uh, row 1 here plus 3x sub 2 minus x sub 3 is equal to negative 4 so when I say negative 3 times row 1 or equation 1 plus equation 2 then then I'm gonna get negative 3 x1 plus uh, 3 x1 I get a 0 there and then plus this is negative 3 times this 3 that's a negative 9 x sub 2 plus 9 x sub 2 is a 0 and then uh, negative 3 times negative 1 x sub 3 is hmm. well, well that's not a multiple um, no problem there um, Anyway, let's keep on moving. So negative 3 times uh, uh, row, uh, this negative x of 3 is positive uh, uh, 3 x of 3 um, uh, minus x of 3. So that becomes plus 2 x of 3. And then this is negative 3 times uh, negative 4. That's a 12. Uh, minus 12 is 0. Now, uh, so this is uh, equation 1, equation 2. N now notice that negative times row 1, I'm sorry, just add. Just row 1 plus row 3. Uh, 
we get a new row 3. So if I add row 1 plus row 3, well, they're all opposite signs. So I, there I just get 0 plus 0 plus 0 is equal to 0. So let's see if I can write this out in terms of reducing all of this. So that first equation, there was no change on it. That second equation that we ended up with, uh, that negative uh, 3 times this negative 1, that's a positive 3 minus 1, that became a 2 x sub 3, and that's equal to 0. And then that last equation just canceled out. So this is all we have here. So if I solve for x sub 3, uh, 2 times what gives us 0? Well, that implies that x sub 3, this implies that x sub 3 is equal to 0. Well, if x sub 3 is equal to 0, then if I plug in a 0 here for this x sub 3, so I have x sub 1 plus 3 times x sub 2 plus 0 is equal to negative 4. That is x sub 1 plus 3 x sub 2 is equal to negative 4. Now, um, I, have, I have one equation. I have two unknowns, 2 minus 1. So we have two unknowns minus one equation. That gives us one parameter. So we can either let um, let t equal to x of 1, or you can let uh, t equal to x of 2. I'm going to just choose here, let x of 2 equal to t. So we get x of 1 plus 3 times t is equal to negative 4. So x of 1 is equal to negative 4 minus 3t. So our solution set becomes x sub 1, which is that negative 4 minus 3t, comma x sub 2, that's t, comma x sub 3, we got 0. So that becomes our solution uh, there. Yeah, I, this guy threw me off when I got here. I just had in my head that um, all these three equations were multiples of each other, but that's not the case. Uh, X sub, um, uh, well, the, the second equation, row 2, is not a multiple of row 1 um, because this guy throws us off right there. But no problem. It's, you could talk about it, but when you start doing the math, we just let the math uh, uh, work, work itself out, and then that corrects us. So here, um, we could talk about solving by back substitution. That is, uh, notice that we have three equations. The first equation has two unknowns. The second equation has two unknowns. This last equation only has one unknown. So from there, I can solve for z. Uh, so if 4z is equal to 8, that implies that z is equal to 2. Now, I can take the value for z equal to 2 and plug it here into that second equation. So I get 3y plus here z, that's 2, is equal to 11. So 3y, subtract 2 on both sides, is equal to 9. So y is equal to 3. Now if that be the case, look at the first equation. So the back substitute simply means if you can reduce the equations where you have one equation, one unknown, one equation with two unknowns, one equation with three unknowns, you can always just take the back ladder and just walk up. Uh, um, solve for one variable, take that variable, solve for the next one, and then take those two guys and solve uh, for the last one. So here x minus y is equal to 5. We got y equal to 3. So x minus 3 is equal to 5. So x is equal to 8. 
so here the solution set is what we call the unique solution um, here we get x is 8 y is 3 and then z is 2 now, now we get the unique solution there for that previous problem we have infinitely many solutions because the choice of t is infinitely uh, many selections so there's infinite possibilities for t thus there's infinite uh, possibilities uh, for the basically the intersection uh, of these two uh, planes and they would intersect at a uh, an infinite line right because this is zero for Z and so you don't get much uh, there uh, for that so two points forms a line right uh, if it's only one value it's just a point and if we get three values X Y and Z then we say that that point um, uh, can be uh, constructed uh, in the 3d space as um, uh, as a plane so um, let's keep digging So this next one, so here we have, look at this, we have two equations, but we have three unknowns, right? So we have three unknowns minus two equations. And so that gives us one parameter. So notice that both of the equations have an x of 1 in them and they, they also both have an x of 2 in them. So it's your choice in terms of if you want the parameter to be x of 1 or if you want the parameter to be x of 2. Uh, you're looking at the answer, you kind of see where um, the author has has used uh, x of looks like x of three to be the parameter. Um, eh, that's that's kind of you know that's kind of fishy. Um, I'm going to uh, really rely on x of two uh, as the parameter, and later on I'll tell you why. But notice that uh, I think ideally you can choose x of one, uh, that is x of two, x of three depends on x of 1 and then x of 2 here could depend on x of 1 or you could use um, x of 2 uh, where x of 1 depends on x of 2 and then that uh, x of 1 depends on x of 2 and then thus you can get uh, some kind of uh, independent value for x of 3. Uh, now um, let's look at that so I'm going to say let x of 2 equal to t, or t is just any real number. So then for that second equation I get 2x of 1 plus t is equal to 0. So solving for x of 1 I get x of 1 is equal to negative 1 half t. That's x of 1. Now I put x of 1 and x of 2 together for this first equation to solve for x of 3. So 5 times x of 1, which we get 1 half, negative 1 half t, plus 2 times x of 2, we get t to represent x of 2, plus x of 3 is equal to 0. Now we simplify that, we get negative 5 over 2t, two t plus 2t, t plus x sub 3 is equal to 0. Add these two guys together. This is negative 5 over 2t plus 4 over 2t plus x sub 3 equal to 0. So this gives us negative 1 half t plus x sub 3 is equal to 0. Well that implies that x sub 3 is equal to one half t. Now, now look at the the difference. Now I'm going to write my solution. So I get x sub one is negative one half t. X sub two 
is t x sub 3 1 half t here choice of t infinitely many it's the, the same equivalence uh, notice that x sub 1 and x sub 2 x, x sub 1 and x sub 3 excuse me um, they're just negative opposites right so you see that here negative 1 half t and then uh, 1 half t and then uh, x sub 2 if you compare x sub 2 to x sub 3 x sub 2 is is twice the size of x sub 3 you see that x sub 2 here um, I get t is twice 1 half t so um, simply you can just take this solution multiply it by 2 and that's equivalent multiply each term by 2 so you get negative t comma 2t comma t or if you want you can even multiply by a negative on that so that would be t comma negative 2t comma negative t all of those uh, would be equivalent solutions even in where the sign when you put that in um, it, it's going to take um, this answer it'll take this answer it'll even take that answer okay and if it don't then you get in contact with me and then we'll slap uh, we'll slap web assign around and we'll make it straight right <laughs> yeah right slap around yeah they'll slap me around let's look at uh, this, this problem here uh, solve the uh, the following system so you get x sub 1 minus x sub 2 is equal to 0 from that first equation notice that if I solve for x sub 1 x sub 1 if I add x sub 2 on both sides x sub 1 is equal to x sub 2 so now for that second equation I have three times here x sub 1 but x sub 1 is x sub 2 minus 2 times x sub 2 is equal to negative 1 So I get 3x of 2 minus 2x of 2. That just gives us x of 2 is equal to negative 1. But we said x of 2 is the same as x of 1. So our solution set is negative 1, comma, negative 1. What about this one? All right. We can use that back substitution method. So what I'm going to do is um, we can look at uh, 2x minus z is equal to 5. And uh, from there, if you, uh, say for example, solve for, uh, for z in terms of um, uh, x. So we get 2x minus z is equal to 5 z is equal to here um, this 2x minus 5 so wherever I have z I'm going to replace z in these first two equations with 2x minus 5 so that first equation you get x minus y minus parentheses 2x minus 5 is equal to 0 second equation is x plus 2y minus 2x minus 5 is equal to 6 so I take these guys and and just uh, reduce so it gives us x minus y minus 2x plus 5 is equal to 0 I'm going to go ahead and and just uh, well just take that second one uh, x plus 2y minus 2x plus 5 is equal to 6 so let's simplify this this is x minus 2x so that's a negative x minus y I'm going to write this just subtract 5 on both sides is equal to negative 5 x minus 2x is negative x plus 2y 
is equal to subtract 5 on both sides we just get 6 minus 5 we get 1 so we're just using back substitution and, and uh, or the elimination method now look at that first equation minus x minus y is equal to negative 5 well that implies that if I get one of those variables by themselves um, notice here that say for example if, if I uh, uh, solve for I'm gonna do this I'm gonna solve for negative x eh. so negative x is equal to y minus 5 that is I just added uh, y on both sides uh, and thus here the x is equal to 5 minus y so for that second equation this is x so for the second equation I'm going to replace you could replace negative x with y minus 5 right and then plus 2y uh, is equal to 1 so negative x from here that guy is equal to y minus 5 so I get y minus 5 plus 2y is equal to 1 so y plus 2y is 3y add 5 on both sides I get 6 so y is equal to 2 so if y is equal to 2 then I can backtrack y is equal to 2 x is equal to 5 minus y right here well x is equal to 5 minus 2 so I get x is equal to 3 if x is 3 then I use over here z is equal to 2x minus 5 so z is equal to 2 times 3 minus 5 well that's 6 minus 5 I get 1 so our solution set is x is equal to where's x x is equal to 3 y is equal to 2 and z is equal to 1 that's the same thing that they have up there Some, sometimes hopefully that works alright let's look at this one and, and just assume that we don't know the answer right so because you know for the test we won't know it you have to solve for it so let's see what we have um, so we have three equations three unknowns so don't know if we have any parameters or that kind of thing uh, let's look at these equations and and see if um, if if the terms uh, relate in some kind of way well this is a 2 negative 3 and 6 uh, right um, it doesn't look like uh, anything relates uh, there uh, this is a 3 negative 2 and a 4 so so basically you could say we don't know much um, so um, we're gonna just just reduce as much as we can uh, take two equations see if we can get rid of a variable um, uh, this is this method that we're using the so-called elimination method is not as precise as in section 1.2 where we talk about uh, Gaussian elimination or Gauss Jordan where we have a precise method here just using grassroots methods basically from high school um, a reduction of order if you will uh, divide and conquer um, in, in that sense uh, reduce uh, the problem make it smaller see if we can solve if not try to reduce that and then see if we can solve you know in that regard um, so so what I'm going to do is uh, say for example uh, I'm looking at this this x sub 1 here um, if I take this term to try to get rid of this 3x of 1 and then take this x of 1 again to get rid of this 2x of 1 uh, here's how I'm going to do it I'm going to say uh, negative 3 times equation 1 plus equation 2 and then after I do that I'm going to say negative 2 times equation this equation I'm backwards as equation 2 added to equation 1 so that's negative 3 times equation 2 mm. crazy pen plus equation 1 that's going to give us a new equation 1 now negative 2 times equation 2 
plus equation 3 gives us a new equation 3 so are you ready for that alright so now let's do that first so negative 3 times um, x of 1 plus 3x of 1 that goes out and so now we say negative 3 x of 2 uh, minus 2x of 2 is negative 5 x sub 2. Negative 3 and this uh, times negative 2 is 6 plus 4 that becomes 10 x sub 3 that's equal to negative 3 times 3 is negative 9 uh, plus 1 is negative 8. So now we say negative 2 times equation 2 plus equation 3. So that's going to cancel out this uh, 2x sub 1. So now we move over here. Negative 2x sub 2 minus 3x sub 2 is negative 5x sub 2. And I need some space because we're getting a new x sub and we're getting a new equation one, a new equation three, but equation uh, two is staying the same. So I got to put that equation in there. I'm sorry. Plus x sub two minus two x sub three is equal to three. Want to be consistent. So negative two times equation two plus equation three. So that first term cancel out. This is negative two minus uh, three is negative. 5x sub 2. Negative 2 and negative 2 is, is positive 4 uh, plus 6 is plus 10x sub 3. That's equal to negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 8 is 2. Okay. So now I'm looking at equation 1 and equation 3. Um, the x sub 2 and the x sub 3's their coefficients are the same but different numbers over here negative 8 and 2 so here's what I'm going to do um, I want to say uh, just a negative times equation 1 plus equation 3 that gives us a new equation 3 okay. so now uh, and all this is happening I'm going to put everything right here. So equation 1, I'm just going to rewrite that. Negative 5x sub 2 plus 10x sub 3 is equal to negative 8. Equation 2 stays the same. x sub 1 plus x sub 2 minus 2x sub 3 is equal to 3. 3, 3, 3. And now um, we said just negative times equation 1, which is positive 5x of 2 minus 5x of 2 cancels out. Negative 10x of 3 plus 10x of 3 cancels out. So it's just a 0. That's equal to negative times negative 8 is 8 plus 2 is 10. And you see that? That's impossible. Used to be a crazy kid show called Kim Possible. I did not watch it. It was for girls. But that's impossible. Thus no solution, right? Impossible. Okay. And just the last one. Let's see how this works out when you have parametric solutions. That means infinitely many solutions, right? <laughs> he didn't like my L. Eesh. Crazy computer. Uh -oh. 
too close too close well let's see how how we get it alrighty so now understand we we know nothing about this so so just get that out yet I just put that over there um, so that when you get through work and you can look and say hey did I get the right result right well it's probably more so good for me than anything but um, <laughs> um, so we got three equations right now, looking at that you can't tell that it's gonna be infinite many solutions I know I can't tell so I'm just gonna to try to reduce you know as as normal um, so um, so here say for example you could you could say x of 1 is uh, well 4x of 1 is equal to 10 minus 2x of 3 um, you could say that but that doesn't really do much for us so uh, here's what I'm going to do I'm going to say um, uh, negative 2 times equation 1 plus equation 2 I'm going to try to use this 2 there to try to stamp out that value and then I'm going to say notice that if I add this 2x of 1 to this minus 2x of 1 uh, this 2x of 1 cancels out so I want to stamp it out so I'm just going to say equation 1 plus equation 3 because we only have three elementary operations I can add a multiple add a multiple of one row add a multiple of one row to another row add a multiple of one equation to another equation right this negative 2 becomes a multiple of equation 1 and then here I'm adding so now um, this gives us a a new equation 2 and this gives us a new equation 3. That's a 3. Okay. So equation 1 stays the same. I'm just going to rewrite that guy. Huh. I could have divided everything in equation 2 by a uh, 2. And that would have left 2x of 1. Uh, 1x of 3 equal to 10 but anyway I'm hitting here now so let's just keep on keep on trucking baby I got to keep on trucking no I don't know the rest of the words okay um, so negative 2 times 2x of 1 is negative 4x of 1 plus 4x of 1 goes out uh, negative 2 times x of 2 here is negative 2 x sub 2 uh, plus 0 that just becomes negative 2 x sub 2 negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6 x sub 3 negative 2 times 4 is negative 8 negative 8 plus 10 is 2 now we're just going to add equation 1 plus e equation 2 equation 3 so that goes out here this becomes 4 x sub 2 minus 15 x sub 3 we're adding here we get negative 4 right 4 minus 8 okay very good so <coughs> now I'm going to try to reduce in which I should have reduced uh, equation 2 up here before but I didn't um, so um, uh, you can reduce or uh, I'm just gonna just use this negative 2 to my advantage I'm gonna say 2 times equation uh, uh, 2 and add that to equation 3 to cancel out this 4 x sub 2 do you see what I'm trying to build I'm trying to build the back substitution Right, I'm trying to end up with one equation with one unknown, one equation with two unknowns, one equation with three unknowns. Right. So um, I'm going to say two times oops, for matrices we use R for the rows and I hadn't gotten to that yet so just use equation two times equation two plus equation three it gives us a new equation 
3. Now equation 1 and equation 2 stays the same, so I'm just going to rewrite those. 2x of 1 plus x of 2 minus 3, x of 3 is equal to 4, and then negative 2x of 2 plus 6x of 3 is equal to 2. So when I multiply 2 times equation 2 plus equation 3, uh, that cancels out this 4x of 2 here. So then we get 2 times this 6 is 12. 12 minus uh, 15 is negative over here is negative 3 x of 3 2 times this uh, uh, 2 is 4 minus 4 2 times equation uh, 2 so this is 2 times uh, this 2 is 4 minus 4 that guy gives us 0 huh. I left a negative off somewhere alright let me go back <laughs> I guess it's pretty good having that stupid solution over there right? this is 2 x of 1 plus x of 2 minus 3 x of 3 is equal to 4 4 okay so we said uh, negative 2 times equation 1 plus equation 2 so that went out there that became negative 2 x sub 2 this became um, ah this is 6 plus 2 is 8 and I'm sure you saw it bless your heart make sure I got everything else right so that's negative 4 uh, negative 8 and 10 that's a 2. Good. So that throws off everything over here. And then we said equation 1 plus equation 3. So that went there to 4. This went to negative. I can't even add or multiply. This is a 6. What in the Eesh. We add it, right? Okay, man, I tell you, I need to quit and go cut some grass. I guess that's all I'm good for. Um, so, um, let's look back at this and. Okay, that's good there. So, uh, 2 times equation 2 plus equation 3. So that gives us. Um, uh, negative 4 plus 4 is 0 uh, 16 minus 16 is 0 and that's equal to uh, 4 minus 4 is 0 now that's good you can have that if you get 0 equal to some number other than 0 it's probably good that you saw my mistake um, and, and I'm not editing this to show you that I'm Superman or um, uh, the Black Panther <laughs> like you know I don't make any mistakes and well I do but the cool thing with this is you can always go back and check you know go back and check your steps um, that is take your answer go back and plug each um, value into each equation to see if the left side equals the right side so when you get 0 equal to 0 that uh, means that you're going to have infinitely many solutions so this 0 equal to 0 implies infinite solution set now all you have left are, are these two equations let me see if I can well I may have space down here oh goody so this is what I have left this is what you got to work with 2x sub 1 plus x sub 2 minus 3 x sub 3 is equal to 4 and then this is negative 2x sub 2 plus 8 x of 3 is equal to 2. Now we said that you can you can multiply an equation by a non-zero number so let's just take um, um, and multiply the second equation by 1 half so 1 half times 
equation 2. So equation 1 stays the same. I'm going to rewrite that one. So this just becomes negative x sub 2 plus 4 x sub 3 is equal to 1. Now I'm going to do one more thing and then then we'll see if we can get the uh, solution set. That is, I'm going to add um, equation 2 to equation 1. That's going to cancel out that x sub 2 right there. So we're going to say equation 2 plus equation 1 and that gives us a new equation 1 let's see so this is 2x sub 1 I'm adding equation 2 to equation 1 so this x sub 2 goes out so this becomes 4 minus 3 this becomes plus x sub 3 is equal to 4 plus 1 I get 5 and then here this is equation 2 I didn't do anything to that so this is just negative x sub 2 plus 4 x sub 3 is equal to 1 I have two equations three unknown so so um, two equations um, uh, uh, three unknowns so that's 3 minus uh, 2 so 3 unknowns minus 2 equations equals one parameter. Now the real cool thing here, you can see it, and sometimes you can't uh, for certain uh, systems, but x sub 1, this first equation has an x sub 3 in it, the second equation has an x sub 3 in it. That simply means that x sub 1 depends on x sub 3, x sub 2 depends on x sub 3. Thus, we let x sub 3 equal the, the, the parameter. So here, let x sub 3 equal to t. t is any real number. So we have 2x sub 1 plus t is equal to 5. Let's put it here. So I have 2x sub 1, oh excuse me, no that's, that's right, is equal to 5 minus t and so x of 1 is equal to 5 halves minus t over 2 that's for x of 1 the choice for x of 3 is here now for that second equation we have negative x of 2 plus 4 times x of 3 is said to be t is equal to 1 so negative x sub 2 is equal to 1 minus 4 x sub t and so x sub 2 is equal to 4t minus 1 so the solution see I can't change the colors uh, my, my color scheme doesn't work up there um, so I'm just going to say the solution set if I can squeeze it in here x sub 1 is Maybe I can go down. I'm sorry. I got space down there. Didn't, didn't realize. I don't need that. Don't want to crowd it up like crowded peas. You got some crowder peas there, what the old folk would say. Whatever that means. So, here the solution set x of 1 is 5 over 2 minus t over 2 x of 2 is 4t minus 1 and then x of 3 was t right and then the choice for t could be any real number does that match up with what they have yeah it looks good okay so we're gonna stop there and let that do it um, if you have any questions, just get in contact with us. Thank you.